Hello and thanks for listening. Welcome to the Terran Space Academy, where we help prepare you for a bright future in the space industry. Please don't forget to like and subscribe, and contribute on Patreon if you can. We appreciate your support. We did an in-depth analysis of artificial gravity in this previous lesson. Today we want to update that episode with new ideas relevant to Starship. Sometimes it seems like we talk a lot about Starship, but there's a reason for that. Starship is the only truly reusable spaceship being built today. I think this concept will soon be copied. There is no reason why the shipbuilding infrastructure around the world, in Europe, Asia, and the Middle East, can't turn their skills to producing something similar, or even bigger, and start building something the size of Sea Dragon. Until they do, we have Starship. I have commented often that while the current Starship design will be fine for early founders of a colony, it will not be safe to transport young adults and children to Mars without more shielding and artificial gravity. I have seen many ideas for providing artificial gravity to Starships, but this is one of the best. This concept was created by SpaceX Vision. Check out their channels on YouTube and Twitter and help them out on Patreon if you can. The artistic genius of creators like SpaceX Vision, Corey Bass of Seabass 3D Productions, and Alexander Svahn are critical to gaining a full understanding of the fundamentals of Starship science, and we couldn't explain these things well without them. SpaceX Vision has been designing a large orbital space station to be launched on the SpaceX Super Heavy Booster. The station is larger than the Starship, and it can also be used as a deep space vessel with some modification. The system was planned to launch on one Super Heavy booster, but our analysis shows that they will need to use what I call an Ultra Super Heavy booster. You can see the explanation in this video. This design has a mass of 250 tons, and its initial design was for it to have one large Hall Effect thruster. This would work fine for station keeping in Earth or lunar orbit, but would not get us to Mars in a very quick fashion. The ship is 13 meters in diameter, and has been updated with more powerful Raptor vacuum engines seen here. And here we see the crew portion of the ship extending out on support columns to start rotation and provide artificial gravity. The only way we have today to produce artificial gravity is to spin something. Now let's do a little math. This ship is 13 meters in diameter giving each of these habitation modules a diameter of about 6.5 meters. If we use this standard to calculate the length of the support columns, we get a length of 44.2 meters. Now we need to see how fast it is spinning. It looks to me like it took about 6 seconds to go 90 degrees. This would mean 24 seconds to do a full 360 degrees, which would be about 2.5 RPM. One of the formulas for calculating the centrifugal force produced by rotation is V squared over the radius. I find this one the easiest to remember. As you can see, this will start with meters squared over seconds squared, divided by meters, giving us meters per second squared, or acceleration. Well, if the radius is 44.2 meters, as we calculated above, that would give the circumference of this full circle as 2r pi, or about 278 meters. If it took 6 seconds to go 1 fourth this distance, that would be 278 divided by 4 equals 69.5 meters. Dividing that by the 6 seconds it took the modules to rotate that distance gives us 11.6 meters per second. Now to get the acceleration felt at a radius of 44.2 meters with an angular velocity of 11.6 meters per second, we square the velocity and divide by the radius. Squaring the velocity gives us 134 meters squared per second squared, and dividing by the radius gives us a little less than 3.04 meters per second squared. Gravity on the Earth has an effective acceleration of 9.81 meters per second squared. Gravity on Mars is about 3.72 meters per second squared, while gravity on the moon is 1.62 meters per second squared. So this starship would give us about 31% normal Earth gravity, a little less than Martian gravity, and not quite twice lunar gravity. 
This would be enough to maintain some muscle and bone mass, and use normal plumbing to take showers, etc. If we go to spin calc and double check our figures, we see that we are correct. If we want to increase the rotation to get up to normal Earth gravity, 1g, or 9.81 meters per second squared, we would need to go up to about 4.5 RPMs, or almost 21 meters per second angular velocity. This would put a lot more strain on the structures. Optimally, you might want to leave Earth at normal Earth gravity and slowly reduce your rotation rate on the way to Mars, so that everyone is accommodated to Martian gravity on arrival, going slowly from 4.5 RPM to 2.5 RPM. A system like this will be absolutely critical to transporting young adults and children so that we can build a true colony on Mars. Thanks for listening. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and stay safe. At Astro Proterra.